Hey guys, Brian here. The shop form is not looking, so I decided to take a break from working on the barn, plus it's pouring down rain at the moment, to uh, show you what uh, I got here. Thanks to one of my viewers, Rick Brandt. Uh, he turned me on to an auction that was going to have all these Cat 50 uh, holders on it which these are what uh, my Cincinnati CNC machine that has never appeared in a video because it's not here it's stored in a buddy's garage <coughs> these are what uh, tooling it'll use and these well so these I guess one here this is a Goering I think is how you say it Yep, green 25 millimeter, and these are hydraulic tool holders. So it's kind of the same idea as shrink fit, <clears throat> which if you're a home shop guy, you're probably not familiar with this. But uh, for those of you that work in industry, you're probably pretty familiar with shrink fit tooling. Uh, the more rigid you get your cutters and your milling setups obviously the heavier you can cut and the longer your tool life so these are supposed to be a, a good rigid setup that's kind of an alternative to shrink fit because hydrostatic pressure of the hydraulics when you turn the screw in is what actually closes down on your cutter on your end mill or whatever kind of cutter you've got in here and uh, that gives you a good firm grip all the way around and it's even and they're supposed to be highly accurate on centers so you don't have a lot of run out with these and they also are supposed to somewhat uh, have a little bit of a dampening characteristic to take vibration out too because of the, the hydraulics holding it uh, there's mixed information what I can find on the internet as to if you run into problems with some you know these are not for like welding flat setups you know there's no set screw in here to hold positive to not pull your cutter out so I don't know how strong these really are about holding they advertise that they hold good and I don't know anybody personally that uses these but kind of from what I've heard is that they they do do a good job of holding and apparently the company that had these uh, must have thought they did a pretty good job or they got rooked quite a few times because they, they had a lot of these uh, I've actually got more than I probably ever need of these uh, 25 millimeter ones so if anybody's interested in some cat 50 uh, 25 millimeter holders I'd be willing to do some trading or uh, sell them outright or whatever because I could uh, it would cost more than my barn to uh, fill these all up with carbide end mills probably uh, your these are like two hundred dollars a piece end mill probably that go in here in carbide typically or it can be a lot more than that I've seen MSC's got one seven hundred bucks if you want to buy one of those so <coughs> $700 a piece, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then there's two more pairs, so 13, so, yeah, 10 grand in, uh, in cutters, I'm uh, not investing that, can't afford it, so, wouldn't be real practical, actually, uh, huh. I didn't think it'd be as big a problem finding metric cutters, in the US is kind of what it is. If anybody knows a good source for metric shank tooling, that would be good to know because I, I've kind of looked around and not really found any places that sell a lot of metric stuff that, that's reasonably priced in the US. Uh, you guys over in, in Germany and Australia and the rest of the world that uses metric stuff, you're, you're probably thinking, oh man, that's awesome because you got all that great tooling. And it, it's good because the Europe uh, still has a lot of major manufacturing uh, going on 
the U.S. pretty much has sold out all their major manufacturing to China because we're we're capitalists and they're so much driven by the buck and then the EPA regulating everything out of business here too, making it not a good job environment for uh, industry has kind of made an American tooling lag behind a lot of the European stuff, I think, in the last you know, 15, 20 years. Stuff like this, uh, I don't know anybody in the States that makes uh, Cat 50 hydraulic holders. I think Kennebel makes some, some shrink ones, but again, I don't know that even theirs are actually made in the States. They're a U.S. company, but uh, a lot of their stuff is uh, Yugoslavian, and uh, I've seen Serbia, India, of course China, so we got it everywhere. But I do have a couple of my, some of my favorite end mills. These are German. Another Guring. So I got a, my full collection of metric end mills here. I got two 12s. I got two 12s, 125, and a 10. So I'm going to get a holder out of here and show you how this works. Okay, so the boss got mad because I've come over here and interrupted his uh, hard working. But uh, I did find out I was lucky the uh, pull studs that came with my machine when I got it are the right thread for these holders. I was kind of worried about that. I was like, well, I wonder if those are metric or English. But uh, they must have had that standardized by the point they did that. Maybe. So, my retention studs that I've got for my mill do fit these holders, which is good. I have like a hundred of these things. And uh, these didn't come with any. And of course, these are all balanced. You can see the, the balance holes in them. So, let's try this one millimeter or my 25 millimeter it's like an inch that's what this is supposed to be nice solid carbide center cut and floor flute warm it's been out there in my car it may have to shrink a little bit to go in this holder it's been inside here I got a 20 degree temperature difference Ford may still have some pressure on it There we go. Set down home. So you can already see it's got zero rock. Can't pull it out though. Give the hydraulics a little tighten. I'm 
man, I guess that's it. Yeah, it's in there pretty tight now. Uh, those cutters are razor sharp, so it's kind of hard to do a whole bunch of yanking on it. But uh, that looks good. Very interesting to give that a test out. I don't usually run these Cat 50s on my Cincinnati old horizontal because the, the Cat 50 and the NMTB, you can see it here, got a different step from one side to the other. And uh, you can't put these in an NMTB unless you either take one of the blocks off or you mill one block. Because in a CNC mill, these always index to this one side. Uh, the NMTB stuff doesn't index. It's it can go in either way. So there's that green. That's how you say that. Now it's completed, ready to go in the mill. Pull stud and holder. Maybe one of my tool numbers. I think it holds 30. So. I can put a few in there. Let's try this little 12 millimeter gearing. Uh, I actually use their end mills. It's one of, one of my uh, favorite end mills for manual milling. I find these suckers really hold the edge good. They're, they seem to be a good tight carbide and uh, they're one of the first to have the variable helixes on them, so they do, they're uh, they're smooth running in mill too. German stuff usually pretty good. So that one slips in. Good tight fit. Smaller screw on this one. Put it four. Yep. Now I have a quarter drive. It looks like the boss might be returning for supervision, or maybe he's just less mad. I think he's less mad. He's still looking. Okay, over. Are you mad that the couch is being invaded? Yeah, you just can't find good help. Yeah. Right there. Still moving in now free. Let's give it just, just a quarter turn and see what we get. One quarter. Yeah, that's enough to hold it. How much more to go? It's really one turn. Turn and a half after it gets a hold. So, probably pretty good hydraulic pressure on that, holding it in there. So, it will be interesting to see how these do. Uh, I think they're going to be pretty slick. Uh, this one, all the rest of those, only have ones that are gearing. Uh, these are shunks, I guess how you say that. Uh, I think they're also German. So they've been in and out of the machine several times, but they've still got uh, a good taper on them. They're not nicked up or banged up, and uh, it's, uh, they still tighten up good, and the bores look excellent. So I think this will be good tooling. If uh, anybody has any experience with this particular tooling or insights, or uh, tell me I made a mistake if this stuff's no count, I pawned it off on eBay or. Usually people tell me that it's no good and I should just give it to them, but uh, <laughs> we know how that goes. So.
tool one and tool two for the Cincinnati. I don't have much Cat 50 stuff. Uh, most of everything I've got previously is NMTB 50. Uh, so it's good to pick up some tooling that I'll be able to dedicate to the big Cincinnati CNC and this stuff can just stay in the tool changer on it and be ready to go and you know throw your Fusion 360 program in there, your cam and let it chew away on something for a while while I'm working on something else so that would increase shop productivity for what jobs it can do. As repair stuff I don't know that CNC is necessarily the fastest way to do a lot of repair things but for some jobs it, it's definitely, if it's something you're going to repeat it's, it's hard to beat. So that's it for today. That's this month's tool acquisition was these holders. So glad to add them to my collection of ever-growing machine tools to feed the iron addiction. So, thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing. And I did survive repairing the barn roof, so y'all can quit worrying about that. Uh, didn't have any issues with that whatsoever. Other than it was freaking hot. Oh man, it was killer up there. It, uh, it was probably it, it, that day. The last one I finished it up, it was like 98 with a heat index of 115 because we're running pretty much right at 90 to 100% humidity here for the last several weeks. It's rained just about every day, so it's super humid and it, it's just it's brutal. But uh, got it done. Hope you enjoy. I better leave the boss alone so he can get his beauty rest. <laughs>